For our Experts in Emotion interview, we have the honor of speaking with Dr. June Tangney um, on shame and guilt, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So Dr. Tangney received her PhD in clinical psychology from the University of California, Los Angeles, and is currently a professor of psychology at George Mason, Mason University. She's a fellow of the APA's Division of Personality and Social Psychology and the American Psychological Society. She's authored or edited several books on shame, uh, including and, and as well as guilt and self-conscious emotions. These books include Shame and Guilt, Social Psychological Foundations of Clinical Psychology, The Self-Conscious Emotions, Theory and Research, and The Handbook of Self and Identity. Her research has been funded by the NIDA, NICHD, NSF, and the John Templeton Foundation. Um, she's also a very much loved teacher and recipient of the George Mason University's Teaching Excellence Award. So I now turn to our Experts in Emotion interview with Dr. June Tangney. So welcome, June. Thanks for speaking with us today. Thank you for having me. It's always nice to speak to another June out there. <laughs> Usual. <laughs> so I wondered if I could ask you to start off by telling us a little bit about what first got you interested in the study of emotion. Um, well, I've always been an emotional person and interested in emotions. And um, when I first started doing work in this area some almost 30 years ago, I guess, um, emotions were not really seen as um, the ideal topic for pure study and actually um, was dissuaded by a number of people to um, that I had become interested in the emotions of shame and guilt having read Helen Block Lewis's book and yes I was raised a Catholic and um, really had some fundamental questions about how these emotions can be useful and when they go awry. Mm. So, I mean, since then, you've really pioneered a field of research looking at a family of self-conscious emotions. And so I wanted to ask you a bit about your work here. Um, and in particular, I mean, like I said, you know, you're well known for your influential work in the family of self-conscious emotions and particularly looking at guilt and shame. And I wanted to start up by asking some broad questions, which is sort of what do you consider to be the most important features of what makes self-conscious emotions a unique class in themselves? What, what are they in your perspective? Mm -hmm. Well, it's a really interesting set of emotions where mm -hmm. um, the target of evaluation is the self and the evaluator is the self. So the self is evaluating the self. Mm -hmm. um, these are pretty advanced emotions. They don't appear within the first six months of life. In fact, um, people argue about when exactly they emerge, but it's um, necessary to have a sense of self as separate from the world. It's necessary to have a set of standards by which you evaluate the self. And in the case of guilt, it's necessary to have the ability to make a distinction between oneself and one's behavior. Mm -hmm. So these are emotions that develop uh, later in life, um, certainly um, shame may emerge around age three, guilt maybe five or six or seven. Um, and um, they're, they're really complex social emotions that have a lot of implications for one's interpersonal relationships and also emotions that have important implications for how we feel about ourselves and how we behave in the future. And so what do you see as some important sort of next steps in this domain of self-conscious emotions? Oh, there's so much <laughs> yet still. Um, it's been exciting to see um, many different researchers doing work on these self-conscious emotions um, and really broadening our, our notions about what falls within that, that family. So, for example, shame and guilt are really um, kind of classic self-conscious emotions, but pride has been receiving a lot of uh, attention recently and um, a little less so embarrassment. So that's exciting to see. But we still have um, so many questions um, left unanswered for the next generations of researchers. Um, I think one key question is um, that we need to better understand the, the situations or the conditions under which shame and guilt can be adaptive versus maladaptive. I think a lot of the research is kind of the adaptive functions of guilt and the hidden costs of shame, mm 
Um, but I think understanding when shame can be useful and adaptive is something that we need to explore. And also when guilt can be, become problematic for people, both as individuals and um, in their relationships. Um, another big question for me is um, when does shame lead to anger and aggression versus withdrawal and depression? We know that shame can take us down a number of different paths, but it's not really clear for whom and under what conditions people respond to threatening feelings of shame in these different ways. Um, a big question that has um, puzzled me for, for, for decades is where do individual differences in proneness to shame and proneness to guilt come from? We know that they're pretty well established by at least um, uh, middle elementary school, um, but we don't know much about how people develop these individual differences. It doesn't seem to be simply a matter of shame-prone mothers have shame-prone daughters or guilt-prone <laughs> fathers have guilt-prone sons. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't seem to be just a matter of temperament, and so I think that's a really big mystery for us. So, I mean, you're talking about guilt and shame a lot, and I mean, one part of your work that's been so important is to, you know, systematically compare these two emotions, which I think a lot of people in their everyday life confuse them or use them interchangeably. And I mm -hmm. wonder if you could say a little bit about what are the core features of guilt and shame, and what are their similarities, but also what are the really important differences? Right. Well, the similarities are they're both negative self-conscious emotions that mm -hmm. feel pretty bad. Um, they occur when we fail or transgress in ways that are um, important and meaningful to us in our environment. Um, but the difference is when people feel shame, they feel bad about themselves as a person. I'm a bad person for having done this. Whereas when people feel guilt, they feel bad about a specific behavior. I feel bad for having done that. And this differential emphasis on self versus behavior seems to give rise to very different motivations and very different phenomenological uh, kinds of experiences. So when people feel shame about the self, um, they often want to shrink into the floor and, and disappear. They feel impaired for the moment. They feel defensive often and um, really want to initially escape from the shame-inducing situation. Mm -hmm. When people feel guilt about a specific behavior, they're not so threatened about the self, and they're more able to focus on the consequences of their behavior for other people. So there's a press towards um, confession, apology, uh, and somehow repairing the, sh the harm that was done. So I see sh guilt generally as being a more future-oriented kind of pro-social emotion, whereas shame may sometimes have those, mm -hmm. uh, those outcomes, but often lead people down the path of defensiveness and sometimes anger and aggression. Interesting. So, I mean, you've also looked at these, you know, divergent social consequences associated with guilt and shame as well, which you've alluded to. And I wonder if you could say, for example, I mean, your work has looked at ways in which they differentially relate to empathy. Um, so how can guilt and shame be so distinct in the way they relate to how we understand other people and their minds and their feelings? I think one of the key differences is that, is that shame is a very self-focused, mm -hmm. selfish kind of emotion. It's about me. It's not about you and how I hurt your feelings, it's about me being a bad person. And so the focus is really on the self taken away from others in the field. With guilt, you're focusing on a behavior that's somewhat apart from the self and I think draws people's attention more to the impact of that behavior on other people. And so it seems like there's a very, very um, close link between feelings of guilt and feelings of empathy. Um, whereas, if anything, shame seems to interfere with an empathic connection. And we have data now from a study of about 500 um, felony offenders mm. showing that proneness to guilt um, uh, negatively predicts reoffense and uh, rearrest. Wow. Whereas, um, shame has a much more complicated relationship with post release adjustment. So, for the most part, um, shame leads to externalization of blame, which then leads to reoffense, 
um, but there's a direct effect which can be inhibitory. So what that says to me is that shame is a complex emotion, mm -hmm. um, which sometimes can be helpful in uh, um, uh, inhibiting reoffense, but often leads us down a path of defensiveness and basically doing not learning from our mistakes and doing the same thing all over again. What about, I mean, that is just so fascinating. And I know you've also looked at differences um, between guilt and shame in fostering different sort of motivational tendencies to help redress maybe kind of more socially embedded problems. Yes, and um, people who do work on um, group-based shame and guilt, that's another whole uh, literature that has um, really been burgeoning in the past years, have focused a lot on how group-based shame and group-based guilt motivate people to um, address social injustices that have been perpetrated by their groups. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So having talked about kind of what first got you interested in emotion and then all the you know, just amazing work you've done in the realm of self-conscious emotions, especially shame and guilt, I wonder what you think from your perspectives in store for the future of emotion, given it is such a young field still. Yes. Um, well, there's lots of additional areas to look at. I think that the uh, the work that people are now beginning to do, uh, to do looking at neuroendocrine correlates of um, shame and guilt are really interesting. One of the challenges we have in studying these moral emotions is that they don't have clear facial expressions associated with them. In fact, um, uh, guilt has no postural or facial expressions mm -hmm. associated with it. I think... The, the guilt sign is, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. you know, a verbal response. Um, and I, so I think um, learning more about the brain and um, uh, how our brain functions when we're experiencing these moral emotions and also how it, um, people who are prone to shame versus prone to guilt um, may differ in terms of their um, brain functioning is a really exciting area. Another thing is um, we, we don't know much about how shame and guilt play out in interpersonal contexts, even though they're very social emotions. There's been almost no work done on the phenomena of guilt tripping and shame tripping other people. Um, when people do that, um, what the outcomes are, we know that this happens a lot in real life. Um, but social psychologists haven't really um, examined that very closely, and I think that's another important direction. Well, I just wanted to ask you then, too, so when students come to you and they ask you questions about should I, you know, embark in the study of emotion or what should I be thinking about if, if I do, what kind of advice do you give sort of the future scholars, you know, in the field? Yeah, well, I give them the advice my advisor gave me, which is, first of all, if that's where your heart is, go for it. Yeah. Um, it's a really exciting um, field of research now. Um, and I think um, the second piece of the is to be to pay very, very close attention to measurement. Um, these are difficult emotions to, to measure. Sometimes people have difficulty even reporting accurately on feelings of shame in the moment, for example. Mm -hmm. And I think one of our challenges in the field is to come up with be better, especially sweet measures of shame and guilt. Absolutely. So then I just wanted to say thank you so much, June, for speaking with us today. It's been a delight. Thank you for including me and for doing this wonderful series. Thank you. So this concludes our Experts in Emotion interview with Dr. June Tangney from George Mason University.